The Greatest Innocence by Joao Paulo Salomão Lopez de Fuego. The book is large and heavy. Browsing through the various chapters, you try your best to understand the ceaseless overflow, the sprawl of names, dates, places, events historical. Most of it ends up as a twisted mass of facts inside your brain. You can do it. It'll be worth it. There's something here. Your educational survey is done. Did you catch any of that? No. Oh well. It's pop quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. This might take a few minutes. You ready? That's the spirit. Here we go. Question one. Who was the first innocence? Oh yeah. This is what I was made for. A pop quiz is a short examination designed to test your knowledge without any prior warning or announcement. Such exams allow the teacher to assess how thoroughly the students have retained the material at hand. Voila, now blast that first innocence. Thanks for nothing. Dolores Day, Dolores. Incorrect, Sola was anointed during the previous century and even lived to see the current one. She was an urban planner who spoke her mind and largely left history to its own devices, encouraging people to excel on their own rather than prescribing to a deified model of history. She is often called an anti-innocence. Sola resigned after an assassination attempt by a Yugo nationalist who blamed her for not taking the side of the left during the turn of the century revolutions. Innocences don't usually resign. Care to try again? Incorrect. Dolores Day was the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. She codified parliamentary democracy and created modern institutions. Among these, the moral intern, she was powerful and beautiful on all her icons. Her colors are silver, white, and apricot. And when you think her name, Dolores, stomach acid rises to the back of your throat, and it hurts. You see a flash silver, a wreath, an airport bag, and blonde hair. You don't know why. Another choice, perhaps? Stay clear of this one. There's something terrible about this one. A strange sensation of loss. When she left the earth, the dust, and the ice, and the humans. That is unimportant to the quiz. Stop thinking about this. Yes, the quiz is impersonal. No need to rouse sensations in yourself at the mention of Dolores Day. Who was the first innocence? It wasn't Dolores Day. Then go with your best guess. Isn't that what students are trained to do when they don't know the answer? Correct. Nothing much is known about him. It's not even clear that he was a he, but Franco Negro presumed as such and called him Pius. He's depicted as a young man with molten gold pouring out of his mouth. All he spoke was gold. It's said he invented God and equality of men before God. He also introduced the gold standard as a way for measuring people's love for Aram. As the first innocence, he declared that there should be more of those like him. It is presumed his disciples were the beginning of the Holy Party, the Founding Party. Question 2. Who was the strongest innocence? Easy. Everybody knows the answer to this. You, me, anybody. An innocence is the highest category of historical personage in the world, a literal personification of history. Traditionally, an innocence, when anointed, assumes supreme rule over the Occident or the known world in general, at least the parts that matter. Hmm, I can do better. Okay, so commonly an innocence does not enforce his or her power through military power. This is seen as unnecessary. The innocence wins because an innocence can't help but win, for their deeds are inevitabilities. Did this help? Damn, Dolores. Incorrect. Vespa Messina, 
is not a person, but a defunct state on the southeastern coast of the Occident. It used to take up most of the peninsula before separating into the republics of Vespa and Messina. Get to try again? And innocence, hmm, I can grate Dolores. Incorrect again. While she originated many modern institutions, launched several successful expeditions, and was even critical of the innocentic system itself, and somehow keeps popping up in your mind, she is not often considered the strongest. Even though the words most associated with her rule are l'amour, la compassion, la autodiscipline, love, compassion, self-control, which could be seen as facets of strength. Would you like to try again? Please, relax. Correct. Named the innocence of militarism, he codified hereditary rule, but at the same time ended serfdom and established the inter isolari real as the global reserve currency. He also established the concept of the nation. Franco Negro attempted to solve the rising tensions between the aristocracy and bourgeoisie by building a unified society in which every man has a place and a mission but at the same time may rise to nobility provided on the strength of his virtue. Question three, who was the false innocence? Got it under control, no problem. Solid on this one. It's widespread historical information. Yes, there exists a group called the Founding Party, known as the Holy Party during the time of the Periconarsian. This, the world's oldest international organization, spends its time in search of either the re-emergence of the innocents or new members. There seems to be a mix-up with the sources. It's not my fault. At least it clearly wasn't Dolores Day. She wouldn't be false. She's beautiful. No, stop thinking it. I said it wasn't her. She was true. Incorrect. Stepan the Despicable, regent of Kedra, was a ruler who conquered the known world during the Kedriatic conquest, instead of the despotic Erno Pasternak. Would you try again? Incorrect. Kedra is a large nation in the mid-northern area of the Mwindi Isola, north of the Occident, between the Ilmaran mountain range and the Pacific Mare Interregnum. Care to try again? Correct. There have been a number of counter or false innocences, some assumed to have innocent qualities, some who just thought so themselves. Occasionally, they have the support of a faction inside the ecclesiastic organization, and accusations of foul play have arisen. The most famous and important of these was Erna Pasternak. He was into torture, despotism, hymns, cannons and world conquest, but got defeated and humiliated by Stepan the Despicable of Kedra. Final stretch, you've come so far and learned so much. This is the most important one. Question four, who was the greatest innocence? The most important of them all, the most precious to humankind. I've got it, honest. Of course, this is my thing, the reason I exist in this world. The correct answer is Franco Negro. Zero doubts, while it was actually her. Incorrect. While Franco Negro built concrete churches and cathedrals, and while many people, especially the Mesk, consider him a father figure, due to his militarism and nationalism, Joao Paulo Salamao Lopez de Fuego argues differently. Another choice, perhaps? Oh yes, militarism and nationalism. My bad. Yes, obviously. Incorrect. He was a violent bastard, out to torture, maim and kill. Whoever stood in his way, he was also a false innocence, disqualifying him from being the greatest and most important and most precious to humankind. Would you like to try again? Correct. 
The Mesk might see Franco Negro as the father of nations, but as of this century, there's been a great shift in attitude. Dolores Day has become widely regarded as the greatest innocence, a most radical change to the whole fabric of the world. Everything from inter travel to the connected world to three consecutive scientific revolutions can be traced back to her. Every decade that passes, she seems less human somehow and more beautiful. And more beautiful. And more beautiful. Congratulations on finishing the test. The results and your subsequent grade have been calculated. You get an F for failure. Ha <laughs> ha You would have done better if you just left Dolores Day for the end. Dial the Dolores Day down a bit. You are shouting at an inanimate object, like a real weirdo. No wonder you seem to have trouble with the right answers.